really can mess with your head, but it adds an extra wrinkle when you are a time traveler and they don't know even know you a family. The longer that Teju stays in the past, the more of his memories return, but it remains to be seen whether this is actually a good thing. But at least he might have a new friend who won't be afraid to bust a few heads if everything gets out of hand. Episode 5 Recap Teju sleeps fitfully, punctuated by the ringing telephone that goes unanswered, his recurring nightmare racing through his head. Except this time, more of the scene becomes clear, as young Teju sees a woman in white running through a forest. Tejomo's mother's voice gently reassures him, almost as if she knows he is having a bad dream, you'll definitely wake up, so don't be scared. I'll always be by your side. Young Teju looks on in horror through a hole in the wall, as the woman in white is beaten, and a man pops up right in front of Teju, startling him. Whatever he sees, Teju stumbles back, screaming. Adult Teju wakes up with a start, to police chief Dong Chul accusing him of sleeping on the job, and a worried nurse in his head proclaiming that he's going into shock. It looks like something is seriously wrong with Teju. His head spins, and Dong Chul smells the culprit, carbon monoxide poisoning. Dong Chul scoops up the weakened Teju and hauls him outside out of danger, but not before Dong Chul bangs Tejoo's head accidentally on purpose against the door frame a couple times, snook. Dong Chul and fellow officer Na Young both frantically work to revive Teju, though he prefers Na Young's gentler methods to the rough slaps Dong Chul doles out. Fortunately, Teju is fine, as he is taken to the all-purposes doctor, Drive Park, who tries to wheedle some good food from Dong Chul's visiting mother-in-law, Ha. Huh. Except, Teju isn't fine, not in 2018. In the present, Tejomo's doctor warns him that he is suffering from dangerously high pressure in his brain, and that he may experience decreased consciousness until that has been stabilized. Teju desperately tries to find the source of the voices but stumbles back as he opens a door to a room of blinding light. It is only at the sight of two children playing doctor that he is pulled back to 1988. The brush with danger makes Dong Chul aware that he should know more about his subordinate, and asks whom he would contact in case Teju were to die. Teju answers that he only has his mother, because his father died while he was young from an accident overseas. Reluctantly, Teju thanks Dong Chul for saving him. Dong Chul takes it as ungraciously as he can, by pretending that there must be something wrong with Teju still, ha. Huh? On a roll, Dong Chul also makes it awkward with Na Young, asking what she was even doing at Tejoo's place alone, a they perhaps dating. Na Young quickly protests that she's here because they couldn't get in touch with the chief, so she needed to report directly to Teju that there had been a complaint of theft. Which brings Teju and Dong Chul to Tejoo's mother's salon. Teju remembers fond scenes of himself as a young child in the salon with his mother and father, and then with just his mother. A picture of Tejoo's father sits by a mirror, and before he even picks it up, Teju can remember what is written on the back, a letter from his father working overseas with a promise to watch baseball together when the plum trees blossom. Tejoo's mother walks in. This must be very strange for him, because he can't help but utter a soft mom, mom doesn't hear it though, and takes the pair to Tejoo's aunt, who was the one that reported the theft. Aunt briefly looks embarrassed when Dong Chul recognizes her from the police station when she previously had made a ruckus, but she's too shaken to be truly affected. Aunt explains that the thief didn't actually take anything, he snuck into her room in the night and creepily folded up all her clothes, and organized her makeup. Even though Aunt had taken enough drowsy medicine that she didn't initially wake up, the creeper had hung around long enough for Aunt to rouse. In shock, Aunt closed her eyes tightly and clutched the blanket, shaking. The intruder moved slowly towards her, a curious look on his face, but as he got closer, Aunt screamed and scared him away. Disturbed, Aunt takes comfort from Mom, and explains that up until about a month ago, someone was also making strange phone calls to her. They always came as she was getting off work, and they always hung up without saying anything. After the interview, Dong Chul can't make sense of a thief who wouldn't steal anything, and wonders, what, is he a maid? Teju just hunts for clues as to how the intruder got in, and finds a broken bottle near the top of the wall, with blood painted on its surface. Dong Chul grins that the intruder should have cleaned up after himself better, since he has left great evidence behind.